Venezuela blokes have saying good morning, everybody. Another edition of the morning briefing. Jeff DeForest here on the East Coast and out West. We have Henry Markin who's been filling in very admirably and, uh, you know, dynamically, actually, for one uh, Mike Luby Lubitz, uh, who will return next week. Uh, good to have you guys with us. And uh, big story of the night, of course, uh, J-E-T-S. Wild anticipation about the debut Jets, of Aaron Rodgers Jets, as the Jets, Jets, Jets quarterback. Jets. Everybody was out there, Fireman Ed, Mr. Jet, uh, all of the uh, former Jets. I think we even saw Mark Sanchez in the stands that they might have even allowed Rich Kotek to hang around uh, at the stadium. But uh, we've been talking about this uh, for a long, long time on the many shows that I've done. And, and here uh, briefly on the morning briefing uh, about uh, teams that operate, players that operate, situations that happen and have to deal with the dark cloud of an overwhelming curse. And we will illustrate that in just a few minutes. But before we do, Henry, I have to get to something that we touched on yesterday. And you would understand this when uh, something uh, just uh, triggers a firestorm of negativity on social media. And I got literally hammered uh, yesterday for even suggesting, implying for a second. And th this was not judgmental in any way. Uh, look, uh, I have a little yarmulke going in the back here, too. <laughs> it's not like uh, I don't look like I'm getting ready for another bar mitzvah at uh, 72 years old. But, uh, you know, so a very sensitive topic, uh, hair replacement. And I, I mentioned that, that I thought I detected that Joe Namath, oddly, uh, one of my heroes, uh, was wearing a hairpiece on the ESPN uh, game day show that he appeared on. And everybody loves seeing Joe Willie. Look, uh, he's a likable character. You get kind of a good feeling about it when you see this guy. He was a rock and roll quarterback before it was uh, in vogue doing things that nobody else, wearing a fur coat and the long hair and the white shoes, and he had the swagger. He guaranteed the victory. Super Bowl three. nobody thought he could do it, right? 17 and a half point underdogs to the great, the great Don Shula. Right? You can hear the NFL music uh, once again in the background. And this team of scrubs, they, they go in there with Joe Willie, and they beat the Baltimore Colts, uh, deemed to be at the time, uh, which uh, is a very popular opinion, depending on uh, what year it is. But uh, that particular year, nobody thought anybody could beat the Baltimore Colts at anything, not, not even at cornhole. I mean, uh, whatever the Colts were involved in, they <laughs> were going to win. So I, I love Joe Namath, and, and yet uh, I suggested that he might have been wearing a hairpiece. You were non-judgmental on this, so you stayed out of the argument, which mm -hmm. is probably because of your familiarity with how <laughs> cruel, how evil, uh, how attacking social media can be. And, and I even got a letter from Cy Sperling, the uh, guy that does the hair club for men, saying that, uh, you know, what, what kind of horrible opinion was this? I, I didn't have an opinion on it. We, we were trying to settle a bet. That's all we were doing on the show yesterday. A hairpiece, fine. Well, wear whatever you want. I don't care how you go outside. You want to put lipstick uh, on your nose? That, that, that's okay with me. But uh, I, I couldn't believe, I mean, uh, just the venom that, that was coming my way on social media. So I, I wanted to just clear the air right here at the top of the morning briefing and say, no judgment whatsoever. I am not Judge Judy sitting here trying to uh, render opinion on what people should do and how they should live their lives. We're just sports commentators, and uh, this, unfortunately, came up as a wager I had with a friend of mine who's also a big Joe Namath fan and has met him personally, as I have, and uh, I, I didn't understand. I mean, just, just the outrage that that, that uh, to quote the great Tony Bruno, the outrage that was sparked by the mere suggestion that uh, Joe Namath might have been wearing a piece on ESPN. I still think he was. And uh, to Mo Schwartz, who is the uh, president of the International Society for Hair Replacement, I am not responding to any of the social media posts that uh, you had uh, that involved my name and, and this bizarre suggestion. So so that's where we started with the Jets yesterday. Right. Yeah. And then, I, I don't know, Henry, there, there couldn't have been a single sports fan that wasn't uh, sitting in, in wild anticipation of this Aaron Rodgers debut, which uh, he comes out on the field there after Buffalo's first possession in the ball game. And you would have thought it was Pavarotti taking the stage at the Metropolitan Opera. It, it was uh, Clapton getting up there at Royal Albert Hall with his buddies from Cream uh, for the reunion. Uh, it, you couldn't have had a more spectacular scene and, uh, you know, more, more excitement in the air about Aaron Rodgers' debut as a New York Jet in front of the Jet fans at MetLife Stadium. And uh, you, you can have all the sabermetrics, all the analytics, all the conversation, all the paralysis by analysis of the talk shows and debates. And you can have Skip Bayless and Stephen A. Smith and they're screaming and yelling, this isn't going to do anything for the Jets. We don't know. And, and unfortunately, 
It looks like well, we, we won't find out, uh, not this year uh, anyway, which is really sad that because uh, I, I wanted to see what would happen. Now, now I, I grew up as a, a Jet fan. My first uh, football team of any great interest was the Jets. Uh, I mentioned this a couple of times here on the show. Uh, mm -hmm. I was a vendor at Shea Stadium uh, circa 1964 is when I started. Uh, 1965. And, and, and the Jets weren't very good, but they drafted Joe Willie. And uh, even if he was throwing six picks against the Denver Broncos, well, we still loved it. We, we thought the Jets were in there with a fighting chance. They, they had some really good players. Many people thought that the American Football League was vastly inferior to the big bad boys of the National Football League. We will run the ball down your throat. And here's this pass-happy league that everybody loved because uh, if you were playing touch football in the streets or in the sand lots at that time, you loved the approach of the American Football League. Never mind this boring shit of handing the ball off to uh, uh, I don't know, some guy uh, like, like Frank Gifford who's going to run three yards up the middle. You wanted to see him just slinging it. You wanted the snakes, Kenny Stabler. You, you wanted Joe Namath. You wanted all of these uh, great quarterbacks that were throwing a rock in the American Football League. And, and finally, that was brought about. And, and think about it. it. You've had so much peril if you were a Jets fan over the years, uh, to the point of just clown-like decisions uh, being the ruination of the franchise. And uh, is that how a curse eventually becomes implemented? I mean, we've had some famous ones, the Bambino, of course. Guy sells uh, the Bambino to the Yankees so he can raise enough money to put on a failed Broadway show. Henry Frazee, I believe, was the man's name with the Boston Red Sox. And, uh, you know, that turned out to be a very bad decision. Cursed him for like 100 years. It, it was incredible. Cursed the Billy Goat with the Cubs. Finally, they were able to uh, dissolve that and work their way through it and uh, win a world championship. I, I don't know when they win another one, but that was good enough for a lot of people to consider that they had broken the curse. Uh, I, a little bit on a minor level, I don't know if you're familiar with the reporter Rachel Nichols was doing a lot of mm -hmm. basketball shows on ESPN. And I think she's got other affiliations now after uh, somewhat, uh, you know, tense uh, and acrimonious parting with the network many years there. <laughs> that does a good job in general. But unfortunately, every star basketball player that she sat down with uh, for one of those fawning interviews. Oh, LeBron, you're so great. Uh, I mean met with an ill fate shortly thereafter. They, they would uh, be sitting with Rachel Nichols one day, and the next day you would see the guy with a boot on on crutches watching the layup drill from the sidelines as they announced <laughs> that he was out for the season. It was an unfortunate uh, occurrence that, that happened frequently enough to make me believe anyway, you know, and I'm a believer in the occult, that there was some kind of curse in play as this was taking place. But, but the offseason with Aaron Rodgers, I, it was spectacular. And, and you're asking yourself, what well, what could go wrong for this guy? Uh, you know, in the first couple of snaps there, he gave the uh, first play, he hands off to Brees Hall, who had just come back from an injury himself, and uh, he, he takes off 25 yards uh, towards the sideline. And uh, you, you're absolutely crazy. You're just going nuts here in celebration. And then <laughs> Rodgers drops back to pass. And I, I, don't, I don't know. Oh, did they send the, the rabbi and the priest from the sidelines in to attack them, the Buffalo Bills, as McDermott was determined uh, to have some kind of pressure on Aaron Rodgers? Either that or, or the Jets' offensive line is as bad as people anticipated and maybe even worse. Where was uh, Mackie Beckett, by the way? I mean, he, he was uh, out there. He's running out on pass patterns as uh, the right tackle for the uh, New York Jets. Uh, so, so, you know, it, it was kind of an ominous start. Rodgers saw uh, on his first drop back, uh, you know, he's about to get sacked and he fires a, a weird looking pass out of bounds. Uh, and the next time he gets the ball uh, and drops back to pass, he does get sacked. And it was one of those strange things where uh, you're saying, oh, what happened here? How, how, how did he hurt himself? Because you didn't see his ankle roll over. Right. And as sportscasters, you know, we're often asked to be uh, medical personnel. And I believe I sent you a text right after that saying uh, that yep. that has to be an Achilles injury. Yep. It's the only thing that could cause him to have to be carted off the field later on after an examination. You didn't see any excruciating pain come from that. Uh, you're thinking an Achilles snaps. It's, yeah, yeah fuck. But uh, he just kind of sat down, uh, resigned to the idea that maybe something uh, negative had happened. The announcers originally said that the word from the team was he, he might have injured an ankle. And uh, the, the worst of our fears uh, came to fruition there where it, it turns out, it, it looks like anyway, an MRI is expected to confirm today, but we don't know. And uh, maybe, you know, there, there's reason to be optimistic because I'd really like to see this guy. I don't know about you. I mean, don't you want to see what he would be capable of doing with the Jets? 
Oh, yeah. Uh, this is Reggie oh, yeah. coming to the Yankees. This is Gary Carter coming to the Mets after being with the Expos all of those miserable years. Uh, that, that's, uh, you know, Messier coming to the Rangers to get them their only Stanley Cup in the last – since the Gump was playing. Uh, this, this was another veteran player coming to New York to come in as a savior, and you actually thought that, that there was a strong possibility it could work. But look, anybody that could drive with Danica Patrick, ne never mind on a racetrack, but imagine getting in the car. Th this guy's fearless. He got in the car with Danica Patrick and drove around town when, when they were uh, going out together in Green Bay. Danica Patrick, who never went, I mean, the over-under on number of laps before she crashed her car when she was driving in NASCAR was uh, usually something in single digits, wasn't it? <laughs> he probably could have cashed any number of proposition bets on that. It, it was always, uh, th there's the uh, flag, yeah, th and uh, they're on their way. And, oh, look at that. Danica Patrick, turn number one. It's over. Rogers, he had the guts, you know, to get in the car with her behind the wheel. So uh, this is a guy that you're thinking is just going to, you know, kind of swashbuckle his way through whatever adversity comes the Jets' way, including their porous offensive line, and uh, end up having uh, just uh, unbelievable success this year. And, and four plays into it, you're looking at Zach Wilson coming in. And now Wilson in the preseason looked brilliant, which is weird because uh, it seemed like all the pressure was off of him. Uh, he, he was so horrible that the Jets were forced to make this move in the first place to get Aaron Rodgers after they had put all of their faith as if Mike Tannenbaum was still running the team. All of their faith was in this guy they traded up to get at number two, and uh, it, it turned out to be all bustology. So uh, the Rodgers thing, I, I, I think, had intrigue from, from so many different angles. I, I, I'm very sorry if, uh, you know, the fans this year and kind of feel uh, very deflated myself. Uh, it's not something... The Jet fans are unaccustomed to being deflated, though, Henry. And I, I don't know. Did you ever have any contact or, you know, have you known any Jet fans? You're out there on the West Coast, so it's unlikely. I, I don't think you see a lot of people in, like, Jay Fiedler jerseys running around in Los Angeles, do you, when he was no. with the Jets? <laughs> no, there, there's pretty minimal contact with Jets fans. It's actually quite nice because I get to experience the the roller coaster of last night. I get to... Well, I guess I got to experience that sort of as a true consumer of football with zero emotional ties other than the bets that I was throwing down on the Jets to win, which fucking cash, baby. Well, well how do you win that game on top of that? I mean, uh, that, that's the other side of the story is yeah, that Buffalo crazy. had their star quarterback in there, a guy that many people were saying early last year was uh, the best quarterback in the league in spite of his penchant for turning the ball over. And uh, Josh Allen, uh, he was throwing picks like he was passing out bar mitzvah invitations in that game. Uh, what do you have? He had uh, three picks and a fumble. Uh, they kept uh, putting up the stat, uh, the graphic that uh, he has had the most turnovers of any quarterback in the National Football League over the last five years. And it's by some uh, wide, uh, very convincing margin that uh, this, this guy is as careless with the ball as you could possibly be. And he was every bit as reckless. In last night's game, in fact, you, you would have thought that this guy, uh, you know, couldn't see the big E on the eye chart, the way that he was throwing a ball around the field. And so uh, the Jets somehow, I, I think that's the one fortunate thing. Uh, the gods of gambling, once in a blue moon, that they kind of give a guy a sucker an even break, as W.C. Fields would uh, say. And so I, I think they let the Jets have a cover in a season where they're ultimately going to win like six games now. Uh, so, and that was one of them uh, last night. How Buffalo lost that game is beyond comprehension, uh, especially after the uh, Rodgers injury and the infusion into the lineup of Zach Wilson, uh, a guy that uh, you would have thought if anybody had offered them a sixth round pick for Wilson in the offseason, they would have said, yeah, yeah, we'll take it. But uh, here he is uh, now uh, under you know, the auspices of operating a franchise under a curse. I mean, Hell, uh, Rich Kotite was their coach at one time, a guy who went like uh, four and uh, 28 during his tenure with, with the New York Jets. They actually brought him back for a second year where he did worse than the season before that when he won three games. I'm not ready to discount the Jets, by the way. Um, the defense is the, pretty good. The defense is really good. And you yeah. know, the, one of the co-founders of No Filter Network last night, he, he said, let's start putting out the content where – he predicted the Jets would be last place. He made this call that he said that the Jets would finish fourth in the AFC East with Rodgers. And and when Rodgers went down, he was like, boom, I was right. Here we go. And I was like, hold up. Let's just relax because yeah. – 
don't know if anybody recalls, but there was this team last year. I, I know it's far away from you guys, but it's the San Francisco 49ers. And we lost Jimmy Garoppolo. Right. And we, we had every other piece, including this fabulous defense. And then we had Brock Purdy come in, Mr. Irrelevant. Everyone's Mr. Like, Irrelevant. Yes. Everyone's like, we're fucked. It's, it's toast. And we end up going to the NFC Championship. And I seriously, to this day, think we lost simply because he got hurt. If he plays the whole game, we're beating the fucking Eagles. Oh, no. He, he, he looked like uh, Tommy John himself out there. Exactly. <laughs> To his, let uh, on their let this Jets there. team play. I think this is a this is a new Zach Wilson. I think this is a very good locker room, and I'm not ready to discount them for six wins and less completely. I think they could put up a good fight in the AFC East with Zach Wilson. That's what I All think. Right, well, we'll see. I mean, uh, like we were, you know, everybody knew that uh, they couldn't wait to distance themselves from mm-hmm. Zach Wilson. Uh, and, and and the stunned look on the Jet fans' faces too, and I I think that that told the story. And it was kind of like, I, I don't know if this has ever happened to you. I mean, you're a young man, so uh, you know. Let's hope it's not in your future where you know you go on a business trip or something, and you happen to come home a day early. You're going to surprise your wife or your girlfriend, and uh, you find her in bed with your best friend, <laughs> or, or maybe even w- with your girlfriend. And that's the old blues song, right? My girlfriend has a girlfriend too. <laughs> Which, uh, you know, conceptually is, you know, kind of disturbing. But, uh, you know, all of those drafts where they were taking nondescript tight ends. And and then think about it, another monumental blunder in the history of the New York Jets. We touched on it uh, yesterday when we were kind of promoting uh, the idea that Rodgers was going to be their quarterback. They they take Ken O'Brien out of Cal Davis in the 1983, the quarterback draft at number 24. And who's sitting there waiting to go three picks later, but the great. Dan Marino. I, I don't think you'll be seeing any references to Ken O'Brien around Canton, except that he did beat Marino in that one game, the uh, famous uh, Jets uh, Dolphin shootout game, which was like 51 45. But uh, there haven't been that many great moments. The Jets thought they were onto something when, when they had Mark Sanchez take them to two AFC title games. And that turned out to be a bigger fraud uh, than the, uh, you know, voter miscount in Georgia. Just uh, <laughs> unbelievable uh, that. Anybody could believe that they were going to be a great team, a perennial and perpetual champion with Mark Sanchez. The only guy who believed it was Mike Tannenbaum, a man who, uh, as uh, we've said previously, uh, buried more people than Attila the Hund. I mean, they buried two franchises completely in the NFL and then, of course, becomes uh, like ESPN's go-to analyst. Hey, Mike, what do you think about that? <laughs> and, uh, you know, you're asking yourself, uh, you know, could, could they have uh, gone to a worse source? for uh, having some kind of inclination as to what went on. But, uh, yeah, I, I guess the MRI later on today going to supposedly confirm this is what the Jets are anticipating, that Rodgers, Kaputsky, uh, out for the season. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm glad you retain your optimism, Henry. Mm-hmm. I, I think that's a byproduct of the, uh, you know, uh, ha- having youth on your side. That, uh, you know, you, you you really believe that they'll still be a good team. I, I was watching some, you know, naturally uh, – a conversation about it this morning, both online and on TV, and people are still uh, saying, "Oh yeah, yeah, I think they could still still do it, go to the Super Bowl." Uh, I would contend this: you're you're likely dreaming, because uh, unfortunately, I, I don't know that Zach Wilson is going to overnight remarkably become the quarterback that the Jets had anticipated he might be when they drafted him as a rookie, put him in there, and uh, you thought you, you, you were screaming, hey, "Hey, just get me Bobby Brister, get me anybody." By the way, uh, I want to uh, dispel the rumor right away. They are not going to re-sign Brett Favre to replace no. uh, Aaron Rodgers uh, with the New York Jets. Remember when no. they hired Adam Gase? Uh, that was a good one, too. Oof. The quarterback whisperer? Yeah, he was horrible. What was he whispering to these quarterbacks? You suck. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he, uh, you know, it was uh, the ruination of uh, you know uh, many a quarterback. Uh, during his uh, tenure as a head coach. Uh, is Gase still in the league somewhere? He had the weirdest eyeballs. Uh, I, I doubt you're familiar with the actor from many years ago, Marty Feldman. He had these giant eyeballs. I was like his characteristic uh, that, that most strongly stood out, even though he was a good actor. Gase had those same crazed eyeballs, and and who knew he was bald, right? That was you know, the other thing. He took the hat <laughs> off, and... <laughs> Here we come with the hair issues again. Uh, that's that's. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to start that whole uh, ugly uh, uh, line of, uh, of uh, thought that was and the threads that were going on social media. I, I'm glad you deleted a lot of the stuff there on the uh, no filter site that, that people were saying about those comments uh, from yesterday. But uh, yeah, yeah, just uh, uh, an horrendous start. 
uh, for the uh, New York Jets of the season. Very deflating. I, I really believe it was very deflating for people that watch football and are football fans uh, in general because uh, th- this was about as interesting a question as you could have created. If you look at sports sometimes as part soap opera, could you have set up a, a better set of circumstances than to have Aaron Rodgers with a jet team that had some promise, both sides of the ball, some very talented young players. Is uh, Wilson? Uh, wow. I mean, uh, what, what a catch he makes there uh, for what turned out to be, you know, I mean, they, they, they got back into the game with that touchdown. And, you know, you're, you're asking yourself, how, how the hell are the Jets still in this game? But uh, again, two nights in a row, right? I, I, euphoria I, I, of the win, I guess, overcame the immediate impact of the fact that everything that you had built your season upon seemed to go out the window within four snaps. Mm-hmm. And, you know, all of that talk about Aaron Rodgers, I, how, how many times did you get engaged in conversations on shows or whatever about Aaron Rodgers and what could he have done for the Jets and what's he going to do when he gets there? Uh, I, I thought after that first pass rush uh, went against him that he probably wished – you know, that, that somebody on the sidelines can hand him a handful of mushrooms so he could get through the rest of the game. But right. it turned out he didn't have to uh, deal with that. But um, all of that became very Shakespearean, did it not? Speaking of the drama of sports, it, it turned out to be much ado about nothing in, in the long run. All of those conversations that we had during the offseason. And uh, uh, very, very unfortunate last night. But um, interesting. Uh, could you get any more interesting in the first week of the NFL season? And, and the continuation of the just a- absolute... Uh, I mean, just crushing uh, defeats uh, that are taking place in New York. Uh, uh, very, very disturbing, uh, especially as they were commemorating 9-11 and did it in such a, a resonating and great fashion. All of that drama was set up uh, only to have the air come right out of the balloon there and whoosh, straight down to earth. That uh, Hey, we're back in there with Zach again. Again, carrying... Uh, Carrying the people out of MetLife Stadium in body bags so with their hopes and dreams just absolutely shattered as uh, Rogers likely be announced today out for the season. Pretty good job of diagnosing that, though, huh, uh, Henry? What, what did you think? Oh, my you, God. You, you, were, you were so quick. You were like, I mean, you pretty much had a field pass. You saw that shit right away. And you, if it's true, I mean, I think you found your new calling. It's, I think 72 years young, you could go back to med school and just <laughs> get sports medicine right in, right in for your next – that's Science great. was not a strong point for me. Uh, it was the reason that I uh, dated the redheaded you know, girl with the freckles, which wasn't a popular right. thing uh, when I was uh, a young man. And uh, you know, it, uh, she was going to ace every science test. And w- once you were in her good graces, there was a possibility she might just move that elbow a little bit so you could see some of the answers right. as you were sitting behind right. her in class. So, other than that, uh, no, not, not very good at that. Although I could have been Dr. Frank Job last night uh, with, with that diagnosis because uh, I, I just couldn't see anything. You, you know, when you see a basketball player and he steps on some guy's foot when he's going up for a rebound and, and you're watching, uh, how far did the ankle roll? And having done it many times, I'm sure uh, a lot of you have, you know, you're playing ball somewhere or, uh, you know, just even accidentally step on something sideways off the curb and uh, the ankle rolls and you that's it. it. It's going to be at least a couple of weeks, no matter how young and quickly uh, you recuperate. Uh, you are, uh, you, uh, you know, you, you know, you're done. But uh, I didn't see any of that when, when I was watching the replay. Uh, I'm looking, going, wait a minute, he didn't really roll an ankle there. This has to be something else. And sure enough, uh, you know, the, the severity of it being that he had to be carted back to the locker room made you think that, that's it. It's the old Achilles heel, which the Achilles heel for the New York Jets. They're operating under a curse. I, I, I think it's fairly clear at this point. I, I'm glad you retained your optimism, Henry. And uh, you're thinking, okay, it won't be so bad. Many people are speculating that. Um, but when, when your one biggest problem uh, that you uh, went out and, and went to great extremes to solve, uh, all of a sudden it is the uh, very same thing that you are now counting on to take a team that had the same promise last year as they did this year, Except for the fact that, what, they had bozoic play at quarterback. So they tried to solve that problem in a big way. Uh, They dealt away uh, quite a few draft picks uh, to the Green Bay Packers, even though the Packers appear to have little or no leverage in this uh, transaction. And unfortunately, it goes down uh, in uh, week number one. Four plays in, Aaron Rodgers done. All right. Uh, yeah. Hopefully better things to talk about tomorrow uh, on the program here. Uh, that, that was very unfortunate. Uh, people were reveling in the injury. I, I, I find that to be 
in very poor taste, uh, even uh, on an outlet like No Filter, uh, where you're celebrating. It's kind of like the Philadelphia fans when Michael Irvin was laying in the middle of the field there, and they're cheering that the guy uh, you know, could potentially be seriously injured. But those are the same fans in Philadelphia that and also booed Darren Dalton's son when he was hitting somewhere around the Mendoza line at a father and son game. His two-year-old kid comes out on the field, and the Philly fans are like, you suck, Dalton! <laughs> Which I thought was also, uh, you know, possibly uh, on the fringe of uh, being in bad taste. But uh, yeah, the people that are reveling in the uh, Rogers uh, injury uh, because they hate the Jets uh, definitely uh, misguided, but uh, not necessarily you know, uh, a, a thing that's uh, not, not in vogue today, as evidenced by the attack that I was under, mm-hmm. or, uh, barely suggesting, and, and not even you know uh, saying with certainty that Joe Namath was wearing a hairpiece. Don't ever do that. You'll live under a curse forever. All right. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Uh, Henry, uh, a great job. Uh, you, dude, how'd your fantasy uh, football show go yesterday? It's good. Um, I actually got to I gotta run and go prep for the for the new one. Again? Oh, it's a daily thing. Oh, it's a daily good. thing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm wearing multiple hats today. So I got I to gotta split. I'm waiting for you to land the plane or land okay. the jet. <laughs> I'm, I'm bringing it down right now here. Um, I, I, and if you drafted Aaron Rodgers with your first pick, uh, well, where Oof. are you at with that in the fantasy world? Oof, bad. Yeah, Tennessee, nobody did yeah. that, I hope. But if you even have them, it's just ugh, tough sledding. Yeah, no doubt about it. All right, uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks so much for tuning in. For uh, Henry Market, I'm Jeff DeForest. Thanks for uh, watching this edition of The Morning Briefing.